Levy was last seen on May 1, 2001. The Metropolitan Police Department of the District of Columbia was first alerted on May 6 when Levy's parents called from Modesto to report that they had not heard from their daughter in five days. Police called hospitals and visited Levy's apartment in DuPont Circle that day, finding no indication of foul play. On May 7, Levy's father told the police that his daughter had been having an affair with a U.S. congressman and stated on the next day that he believed the congressman to be U.S. Representative Gary Condit. Levy's aunt also called the police and told them that Chandra had confided in her about the affair. Police obtained a warrant on May 10 to conduct a formal search of Levy's apartment. Investigators found her credit cards, identification and mobile phone left behind in her purse along with partially packed suitcases. The answering machine was full, with messages left by her relatives and two from Condit. A police sergeant tried to examine Levy's laptop computer and inadvertently corrupted the Internet search data as he was not a trained technician. Computer experts took a month to reconstruct the data to determine that the laptop was used on the morning of May 1 to search for websites related to Amtrak, Buskin Robbins, Condit, Southwest Airlines, and a weather report from the Washington Post. The last search at 12.24 in the afternoon was for the location of the Pierce Klinkle Mansion, a historic house at Rock Creek Park that is used as the park's administrative office. On July 25, 2001, three D.C. police sergeants and 28 police cadets searched along Glover Road in the park but failed to find evidence related to Levy. Later, a second attempt also produced nothing. Controversy surrounding Levy's disappearance drew the attention of the American news media. Levy's parents and friends held numerous vigils and news conferences in an attempt to bring Chandra home. Condit, a married man who represented the congressional district in which the Levy family resided, at first denied that he had had an affair with her. Though police stated that Condit was not a suspect, Levy's family expressed that they felt Condit was being evasive and possibly hiding information about the matter. Unidentified police sources allege that Condit had admitted to an affair with Levy during an interview with law enforcement officers on July 7, 2001. Condit described her to police as a vegetarian who avoided drinking and smoking. He thought that Levy was going to return after her graduation and was surprised to find out that the lease on her apartment had ended. Investigators searched Condit's apartment on July 10 and questioned flight attendant Anne-Marie Smith who claimed that Condit told her she did not need to speak to the Federal Bureau of Investigation about his personal life. Federal officials began investigating Condit for possible obstruction of justice as Smith was also involved in an affair with him, though she was not an acquaintance of Levy's. Upset by leaks to the media, Condit refused to submit to a polygraph test by the D.C. police. His attorney asserted that Condit passed a test administered by a privately hired examiner on July 13. He also avoided answering direct questions during a televised interview on August 23, with news anchor Connie Chung on the ABC News program Primetime Thursday. Intensive coverage continued until news of the September 11 attacks supplanted the media's coverage of the Levy case. In a nationwide Fox News Opinion Dynamics poll of 900 registered voters conducted in July 2001, 44% of American respondents thought that Condit was involved in Levy's disappearance and 27% felt that he should resign. 51% of the respondents believed that he was acting as if he were guilty and only 13% felt that he should run again for office. However, the poll sample taken from Condit's congressional district held a more favorable view of Condit. On March 5, 2002, Condit lost the Democratic primary election for his congressional seat to his former aide, then-Assemblyman Dennis Cardoza, with the Levy controversy being cited as a contributing factor. He was subpoenaed to appear on April 1, 2002, before a District of Columbia grand jury investigating the disappearance. The date was kept a carefully guarded secret to avoid further leaks. Condit left Congress at the end of his term on January 3, 2003. District of Columbia Police Chief Charles H. Ramsey announced on May 22, 2002, that skeletal remains matching Levy's dental records had been discovered by a man walking his dog and looking for turtles in Rock Creek Park. Detectives found bones and personal items scattered, 
but not buried in a forested area along a steep incline. A sports bra, sweatshirt, leggings and tennis shoes were among the evidence that was recovered. Though police had previously searched over half the 1,500-acre main section of the park, the wooded slope where Levy's remains were eventually found had not been searched due to its remoteness, about one mile north of the Pierce Klingel mansion and about four miles from Levy's apartment. After a preliminary autopsy was performed, District of Columbia police announced that there was sufficient evidence to open a homicide investigation. On May 28, D.C. Medical Examiner Jonathan L. Arden officially declared Levy's death a homicide, but said, There's less to work with here than I would like. It's possible we will never know specifically how she died. Arden found damage to her hyoid bone, suggesting possible strangulation, but did not deem it to be conclusive evidence of such a cause of death. On June 6, after the police completed their search, private investigators hired by the levees found her shin bone with some twisted wire about 25 yards from the other remains. Police Chief Ramsey said, It is unacceptable that these items were not located. On May 28, 2002, the Levy family organized a memorial service at the Modesto Center Plaza that drew over 1,200 people, some from as far as Los Angeles. Speakers at the 90-minute ceremony included Levy's brother, grandmother, great-aunt and friends. In a eulogy delivered in Hebrew and English by Rabbi Paul Gordon, Levy was described as a good person taken from us much too soon. About a year later, on May 27, 2003, Levy's remains were buried in Lakewood Memorial Park Cemetery at Hugson, California, near her hometown of Modesto. Attended by about 40 of Levy's friends and family members, the private ceremony concluded with the release of 12 white doves.